what this actually is. I have some products that are essential to helping me get my life back on track. Now, let's get into the playlist that I have been talking about forever, but never really shared until now. I realized that there was something really strange on the back of my Saint Laurent blazer. I have no idea what happened to this blazer, but Jake Gyllenhaal has gone into my elite level of acting. So I have missed quite a few videos on YouTube recently and that is mainly because my life has been quite literally all over the place. So in today's video, of course I'll give you insight into what on earth I've been up to but also share insight into some of the key products that I have had to purchase to help me get my life back on track. I normally share more premium high-end items on this channel, but not today, guys. Today, these are relatable everyday items that are, for me, super, super essential in resetting my life and just helping me feel like a well-functioning, organized adult. I've also finally curated the R&B playlist that I have banged on about on this channel a number of months ago. It's finally linked in the description box below, and I talked about it because Music is one of the things that I am so happy that I use to inject moments of joy into my life. And I came across a playlist that just honestly was gold in terms of barely skipping a track. So that is linked in the description box below. I also have a few other things that I think are gonna be useful for anyone out there who wants to inject moments of joy, entertainment, or ease into our very, very busy lives. So let's get straight into what on earth I've been up to. And if you watch my channel, you guessed it, work has basically been absolutely insane. I mentioned that I have traveled quite a lot this year in previous videos. I was in Milan a number of times. I was also in Athens. I was in Luxembourg. And most recently I have been in quite a number of places. One of which is my absolute favorite or top three favorite cities in the world. So my favorite city is in order of favorite, London. I am a die hard lover of London, even though I'm from London. I think second to London would be New York City. So I was in New York for work for quite a while and I've been to New York before, but I have to say guys, this time in New York, it was just so much more vibrant. Typically I go to New York in the summer and it was summer when I went and New York just literally came alive. And again, I've been in the summer before, but it was different this time. It was so vibrant, the energy, the dynamism, it was just, it just had an incredible energy this time around. And I can't explain why. Even different in terms of how I was treated by the, um, is it TSA that you guys call them? The people that basically manage the airports. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I went to New York, they were super mean <laughs> to me and the people that I went to New York with. But this time around, you guys were just so welcoming. I had a great conversation with the guy at the passport office. So there is something going on at the moment that I'm absolutely loving about New York. So that was an amazing time, even though I was there for work. I stayed at the Beekman Hotel, which is just a beautiful kind of old school, um, old world type hotel, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The food, I have to say, was not great at the Beekman, but in terms of the accommodation and the service, I was definitely a fan. And then I was also in Cannes again this year, and I was in Cannes for quite a while, and Cannes is just one of the most amazing places to just enjoy the French Riviera, even though I was there for work. Again, similar to New York, the energy obviously is very different, but you get such an amazing energy from Cannes. It's vibrant. It's definitely super, super bougie. I spent a bit of time at the Carlton, at the Martinez, and the views are to die for. So you definitely, definitely, definitely can lean into the bougie when you are in Cannes, but also it lean into the super relaxed elements of Cannes. So I did end up visiting quite a number of their beautiful luxury boutiques just to have a browse, guys, just to have a browse. And I have to say the service and the reception in all of the luxury stores that I went to was amazing. I had great conversations. I was in Miu Miu. Of course, I went to Saint Laurent. I also spent a bit of time in Dior. I actually went to Dior to see if I could get a jacket that I have had my eye on. They didn't have it, 
but they were just super super warm and welcoming in every single boutique that i went to i'm very happy though that i didn't buy anything in can because i wasn't there for the shopping guys i was there for work one key lesson I learned whilst I was in Cannes is that I really, really need to learn to speak French, guys. It's getting to the point now where I just have so many experiences where if I spoke French, my life would be so much easier. So as I mentioned, I spent quite a bit of time in Cannes. And when you spend a bit of time in one place, you end up almost like creating a mini life. And I ended up ordering Deliveroo. And each and every time I ordered, ordered Deliveroo, the delivery driver got lost and you can imagine that if you if you don't speak um french and the driver does not speak english that whole situation becomes very stressful very quickly the only sentence that i retained when i was in um school learning french is je ne comprends pas je ne comprends pas for those that aren't french speaking like me basically means i don't understand so i just kept saying to the delivery drivers I don't understand where you are. I don't understand. So it was obviously very frustrating for them because, you know, I'm in France and I should be able to construct a conversation in the local language. So my experience in Cannes isn't the only reason why I want to learn French. I was also in Paris very, very recently and ended up being one of those customers whose flight got cancelled. So I literally finished my meeting, got into the Uber, on my way to the airport and the uber driver told me oh by the way your flight is cancelled i thought he was joking but the long story short is that this flight cancellation was basically one of very very many flights that ended up being cancelled and was down to the global issue with it that basically meant that loads and loads of flights didn't end up happening loads and loads of flights got cancelled on my way into Paris, my flight was delayed by an hour and a half, but I didn't realize that the situation was gonna get a lot worse. I am so incredibly fortunate that because we have the Eurostar in, um, in Paris, I was able to basically just troubleshoot and book a train that would take me back to London. Luckily, I wasn't stuck in, I don't know, New York or Germany, where of course you cannot get a um, train back to London. So the Eurostar literally saved my absolute bacon and I was very, very grateful for the fact that I was able to get home. But the reason why I need to learn French beyond can is that one of my Uber drivers, the third one that didn't cancel on me, basically I couldn't find her, she couldn't find me. And you can imagine how that went. She was just honestly trying her best. I was trying my best, but again, we couldn't really communicate. Luckily, I ended up finding her, but it has become really really clear that i need to really do a better job at just having basic go-to phrases in french that can really help you get out of you know situations like trying to find an uber or trying to find your delivery driver or just it's just always always helpful to have another language beyond english that you can speak so that is a great great lesson that i learned but yeah so traveling has been a little bit insane and I just had very little energy, guys, to do anything else. And I also needed to live, right? So it was just a combination of picking where you spent the energy that you had, what was left of the energy that you had. And that's part of the reason why it's been quite challenging to get myself back on track with YouTube, get myself back on track with life. So that is like the whistle stop update in terms of kind of why I haven't uploaded for a while. So as I mentioned, I have some products that are essential to helping me get my life back on track and they are on my right hand side here and i'm just i'm just gonna get straight into it guys so one of the things that i really focus energy on was getting back into my exercise routine i've talked about the fact that exercise is one of those things that i have become so much more consistent with i talked about the fact that i I'm a very much, very much a natural runner, but I've wanted to get into strength training for a while. And I have to say, guys, I'm starting to, I think I'm starting to enjoy strength training. And this item is an absolute lifesaver because when you do do strength training or even running, your muscles and your um, um, body needs to be kind of loosened up. So I basically bought a massage gun from Amazon that has just been absolutely game changing. It's great for loosening the muscles on your calves. I am terrible at stretching, so I'm somebody that really, really needs to make sure that I use things like massage guns because I, I hate to stretch, guys. I wanna get straight into the action. 
um, but it is, it is essential to avoid injury um, by ensuring that you are releasing the, the fascia or the muscles that naturally end up getting used quite a lot and need to also to be taken care of. So massage gun, guys, is essential if, like me, you are really trying to be super consistent with your fitness because um, it's obviously good for you. So this is only like 15 pounds from Amazon. So I will link it below. So the other thing that I have been, I guess, buying or have bought to keep my life as organized as possible, guys, can you guess what this actually is? You might be able to guess what this actually is. This is basically a shoe organizer slash space saver. So I have definitely bought quite a few new pairs of shoes recently and I'm running out of space in my closet room and therefore was looking for solutions that would allow me to um, basically save as much space as possible when it comes to shoe storage. So this is a shoe organizer from Amazon. I really like the kind of smoky acrylic color of it. It comes with two pieces. So this piece basically slots in here like that. So you can get that back in um, like that. And then the bottom piece slots in the bottom like that as well. It's just a great way of, I guess, adding more shoes into your shoe area or your shoe storage area um, if you are basically tight on space. So it comes in lots of different colors. Um, I was torn between the black and the green that you can see here, but ended up going for the black because my closet is very much a black and white theme. So if you're looking for shoe saving storage or space saving storage for your shoes, one thing that I definitely don't have a lot of is perfume. So I'm definitely gonna start being a bit more ambitious or a bit more adventurous, I think is the word actually, when it comes to building my perfume collection. And this perfume is like my go-to favorite perfume of all time. And it is <laughs> from a brand that one would argue is no longer really considered to be high-end or luxury, but I don't mind. It is basically the brand, um, Moschino. So I basically came across this perfume when I was in my teens, guys, and fell in love with it. So I have obviously tried lots of perfumes since then, whether it's, you know, Tom Ford, whether it's, you know, um, Louis Vuitton, whether it's, I've tried many, many luxury perfumes. I have not found a perfume that I love more than this Moschino Cheap and Chic. And I have to say that it is only the red and black one that I love. It comes in other variations, but this is just like, honestly, my absolute favorite fragrance of all time. What I love about this is that it is super, super affordable because um, perfumes go for insane amounts of money nowadays. My Tom Ford um, Black Orchid um, one, all the variations of the um, Tom Ford perfumes are like 100 plus. 200, 300, this guys is basically about 35 pounds from Amazon. So I am definitely um, uh, running out of this and therefore this is one of the key things that if I don't have this, I, if I don't have a full or almost full bottle of this, my life is not on track. I'm so sorry guys. Keeping with the theme of getting my life um, organized is guys, it is still really, really hot in the UK. At least we have days that are often quite hot and the london underground on the um in london is just insane in terms of air conditioning isn't always present you have so many people that are packed into carriages and there's nothing worse than showering in the morning going into london underground and then sweating it is just one of my most annoying the annoying things that i absolutely hate so long story short i have succumbed to buying a handheld fan. Guys, this item I've come to consider as essential to adulting. Easily fits into your handbag, it's super slim. So this is now an essential item in helping me get my life on track and getting my life organized. The other item is basically, guys, I told you that these were not gonna be um, high-end or sexy items, is basically, guys, vacuum cleaner accessories. So I have a Miele vacuum cleaner and I've ordered a couple of items that I have been meaning to order for quite a while. The first one is basically a replacement head. 
So my current head basically got super, super grimy. Over the years, just got really, just really, really grimy. So I ended up basically um, seeing if Mila could replace the head. And luckily they do. So they offer this universal head that I believe fits on most of their um, vacuum cleaners. And this is the kind of stuff that really excites me because I like to, you know, um, keep my home as organized as possible. And this is my new essential item to keep myself organized and get my life back on track. So I'm not gonna talk you through what a vacuum cleaner head does, but this is a bit on my old one that just got super, super grimy and dirty and it just needed to be replaced. So I am delighted to have a replacement vacuum cleaner um, for my Mila. And I also ordered their vacuum bag. So it comes with these air bags, which I love and are really good at capturing dust and all of that good stuff. So these are things, guys, that I have not had the chance to even like, sort out and get organized about because I've been traveling quite a bit. Even ordering ink, guys, for your printer. So when you are ordering items online and need to do the returns, the worst thing is when you realize that your ink has basically run out. So it happened to me and I ended up in haste ordering the wrong ink cartridge. Um, which was super, super annoying. So I basically wasted money and um, need to basically change the ink on my printer. Speaking of returns, do you guys do this as well? Which is basically buy sanitate or um, this stuff, packing tape in bulk. So when I'm returning items, these are essential items that I need to have in my arsenal because when you are returning packages, you need to make sure, sure that the label doesn't get um, damaged and therefore I sellotape the label, but also obviously use the sellotape to fasten the package so that the items and the goods don't get damaged. So if you're buying expensive luxury items, I think these days luxury brands are so much more strict. If it's not returned as you know expected, there can be some challenges there. So I basically make sure that I seal my packages in a way that is really secure and you know really, really well done. Speaking of items, so if you watch my channel, you know that one of my absolute favorite brands and fashion houses is Saint Laurent. So I am a diehard fan of the brand and ended up buying a silk blazer, a gorgeous black structured silk blazer from Saint Laurent and ended up guys wearing this item once. So while I was packing for one of my trips, I realized that there was something really strange on the back of my Saint Laurent blazer. So I looked at it and I was like, I'm so confused. What is this raised bit of material on the back of the blazer? And one thing I talk a lot about on the channel is that when it comes to quality, Saint Laurent is elite impeccable quality, not a thread stitch out of place in any item that I've ever, I've ever purchased. And their items just stand the test of time. So it was just like a moment of absolute shock to see that a blazer that I had just purchased was coming apart almost at the back. It almost looked like the, the silk material was cracking. I have to be honest, it was actually really disgusting. It looked like skin that had some kind of like infection on it. So it took me, uh, it took a lot of strength actually to be able to look at it and even to touch it because it looked again, really, really disgusting. But this raised bit that I'm sharing here basically ended up happening to the blazer. To this day, I have no idea what caused this to happen. I didn't lean on anything. It was also cracking at the um, armpit area. So the only thing I can, I guess, um, conclude is that this treatment on the silk something affects it and cause this material to basically start cracking i even googled i thought it was moths and this is not a moth related thing i have no idea what happened to this blazer because again my experience with sun has always been impeccable quality so i can only assume that the material for some reason just I don't know, I, I can't even explain, because even if you bought a satin blazer from Zara, for example, this would not happen to it. So it must be that there is something about this material that has used that has caused it to crack like this. 
So long and short of it is I ended up having to return the blazer because it was damaged and I'd spent quite a lot of money on this blazer. There was no way, even though I'd worn it just once, that this was acceptable in any way, shape or form. So I returned the blazer guys and ended up getting um, store credit. So that was really disappointing. So um, I do have, while I'm talking about items, I've bought quite a number of new items and I'm really at the stage where I am just strategically, you know, updating my closet of things that I think are essential, essential things that I think are going to really add value to my closet. So stay tuned for some updates. I probably won't share everything because it might just be a little bit too much, but certainly some of the key things that I think could be super, super valuable if you are on a similar journey to me in terms of updating your closet. I have also, guys, found a new dry cleaner. So as you know, if you watch my channel, I have been investing in my closet for a while now. And when you are investing in quality pieces, you also have to take care of them. And that sadly means that you often do have to dry clean almost every single item. That's one of the major considerations, let's just say, when you are buying luxury ready to wear is that the vast majority of items, 99.999% of items are dry clean only. So I tried Laundry App for the first time or I Hate Ironing, which is another laundry app and my review is that both are good but both are not particularly optimized for luxury items and the reason why i say that is because a couple of times that i have tried to get luxury items dry cleaned i have had messages back from the dry cleaners to say that they will only clean these items if i basically sign a waiver that says if they get damaged it's not really their um fault or there just seem to be a lot of like nervousness with regards to dry cleaning luxury items that made me uncomfortable so i looked for i guess i tried to find a dry cleaner that was much more comfortable and used to dry cleaning luxury items so i wanted one that could basically be um uh able to pick stuff up from my house and then drop it off at my house i did find one which was called swan dry cleaners but they for some strange reason no longer basically service my area long story short i found a new dry cleaner that is literally called i think it's called luxury dry cleaners very very appropriate name and they're based in london so i tried them for the first time recently and i was really happy with the service and i've just actually um off the back of my traveling escapades done a whole another round of dry cleaning so that is something that i think is really handy for anybody out there who is also upgrading their closet like i am so the luxury laundry app i'll basically just add their details below and on screen here so you can get a bit more information on them and whether they service your area or not they're quite central but i do think this that they service quite a lot of other areas of london as well moving on to things that i need to organize my life up, guys i don't really do like hair stuff on this channel but this is insight into the things that are just real to keeping your life i guess um functioning and part of that really is taking care of your hair guys so i have been really trying to um i guess purchase products that are going to really really nourish my hair i've been using olaplex for a while but have also been really trying kerastars which i'm really really enjoying so this is basically the um hair mask that i use from kerastars and i absolutely love it it smells really really fresh and nice and is basically for chemically treated and damaged hair so my hair is chemically treated I, it's not arguably not damaged but i do like to really use products that just get in to the hair follicles and really really take care of it so i've got the hair mask i also um ordered a another hair mask which one which is kind of um more of a hydrating hair mask repair hydrating so this one is um having a look here fiber quality renewal mask so for very damaged over processed hair is what this one is for and then this one is also a mask and it is anti-breakage repairing filler for all hair types but I think it has more of a moisturizing element. 
because you have to have that kind of protein moisture balance right. So this is the other one that I am using. I actually have not smelled this one. So let me smell this one and see what it smells like. Let's give it a go. Oh, lovely. Very, very unoffensive, almost like baby powder. I like that. It's really, really subtle and soft. So I'm looking forward to enjoying that from Kerastase. And then I also wanted some leave-in products as well. Um, but this one actually is a shampoo. So again, I've been mainly using Olaplex shampoo, but I'm quite keen. That smells really nice. To so try the Hydrating Protective Shampoo System. Um, yeah, really, really nice. So this is the um, shampoo that I'm looking forward to trying. And then I wanted to leave in cream or moisturizer. So this is for daily moisturizing, frizz reducing leave in treatment. I really like the smell of their products. I also have the um, heat protector that I use when I'm blow drying my hair. So that one I really, really like as well. I'm trying to see if it smells good. Very nice. Ooh, that smells really, really nice. Their products don't smell too strong and offensive. So this one I'm looking forward to using because I want like a daily moisturizer that is really good quality. I was actually having a chat with a friend of mine about hair health and things of that nature. And she's one of these friends that basically has been trying every single YouTube trend when it comes to hair care. Rice water, onion water. She's like a super experimental person when it comes to hair. Long story short, her hair is not doing very well at the moment and she just wants to go back to basics. And she wants to go back to like the products that she used to get from the hair store. So nothing fancy. Whereas in my experience, the more fancier my hair products have gotten, I feel like the healthier my hair has become as well. So it's just really interesting how different products, I guess, just work for different people. So you gotta find what works for you. So again, I was trying Olaplex, nothing wrong with Olaplex, but I just wanted to try Kerastase and I really like their products. So far, so good. So some other key items here that are just, again, super, super regular, but essential items, um, which is basically guys, box cutters. I get a lot of packages and there's nothing more annoying than trying to find a box cutter. Often I end up using a knife. I don't want to do that anymore. So these are basically box cutters that I ordered from Amazon. So I ordered a pack of these because I wanted to have um, many that I could basically access um, whenever I needed them. And I wanted to order a color that actually was easier to find. So this comes in black as well, but I actually wanted a color that was really, really easy to spot. I also ordered an extension cord that has USB and USB-C ports. So one of my biggest regrets is that when I was renovating this house, I didn't have enough plug sockets on my walls that had USB or USB-C ports. I only have one in my kitchen and in my bedroom, but they are just basically now standard and essential for so many different types of appliances that we use or um, items that we use. My fan, for example, is basically um, charged on a USB, which I actually, actually have here. Um, USB, yeah, exactly, USB, which is actually um, here. So the point is, I now have to have external, I guess, um, extension cords that allow me to find convenient ways to basically charge items all around the home. Some other items that are essential are tissue. So I annoyingly don't have tissue boxes positioned in all key areas of my house, notably the living room. So I've ordered um, a box from the Cheeky Panda, which is a brand that I really like because they do um, tissue or toilet roll that is basically made from bamboo which is more sustainable. So I need to basically find a tissue box that is a bit more aesthetic and in keeping with my decor to place this in. And I also bought some um, hand wipes from the same brand. And I am somebody who cannot live without hand wipes in my bag. So I've ordered quite a few of these to place into my bags. Now let's get into the playlist that I have been talking about forever, but never really shared until now. Again, it's linked in the description box below. So I work out more consistently now. And in case you're not aware, the secret and the key 
to enjoying your workouts often is having an amazing playlist. So I work out to all different types of genres. Sometimes I'm in a beast mode um, type of mood and therefore I listen to hip hop and more like super like motivational beats, if that makes sense. When you're trying to get up that hill, guys, you do not want to listen to an R&B track. You want to listen to something that is a little bit more, I guess, um, again, motivational in terms of getting you through that workout. But I'm also getting back into R&B again because there was a time where I just got a little bit bored of, I guess, the R&B songs that I came across and then came across this playlist where I was like, there's not a single track that I want to skip. And I was just so enamored by this playlist. It is linked below. A couple of songs to call out, which most of you I'm sure will be aware of. Coco Jones, the R&B singer Coco Jones, her voice, is just God given. That's all I'm gonna say. Her voice is out of here. She doesn't sound like anybody else uh, in the R&B scene. Ira Starr has some really great songs on this playlist. I first came across Ira Starr when I was actually in Canada and I was like, wow, the name is Ira Starr. And then I listened to a couple of sessions, acoustic sessions with Ira Starr and she is, she is absolutely a star beyond obviously the hits that she's had. She is genuinely a star. And then, um, there are a couple of un relatively unknown artists that I am just like, wow. Um, before I go into that, there's a song called My Baby by, I think it's an Afrobeat artist called BN, featuring Ira Starr. That song is just amazing, so you have to listen to that. Love the British artist Ray, R-A-Y-E. She's got a song that I'm obsessed with called Flipper switch, love that. Great for working out. We've got some new songs from Usher on here. There's a song by a TikTok group that I came across. They are a UK R&B group, guys, called No Guidance. So they are, I'm sure you guys are aware, a TikTok sensation. And they've got a song called No Guidance. When I first heard this song, sampling Spando Ballet, that song True, I was like, please. This is a classic iconic sample. This song better be amazing. And I can't lie guys, the song is so amazing. It's basically a song about a guy that is in love with a girl that basically treats him really badly. Very, very toxic lyrics. However, they've made a toxic song sound so beautiful and high energy. Like it's so amazing how they've done that, but it basically takes you back to the old school days of when you were into R&B bands, <laughs> R&B boy bands. So that song is amazing. It's called Lie To Me and it's by the, brand, um, the band No Guidance. And there's a UK artist, quite a few UK artists on this playlist. I'm so proud. There's a guy, a girl called Amma Louise and she has a song with, I don't know who this artist is, but I'm assuming he is French. It's T-A-Y-C. So it's Amma Louise and I want to say Take. The song is called Send Me Your Love. And at first I thought, you know what? It's a cute song. It's cute. She's given kind of old school Destiny's Child Beyonce first album type of vibes. And then when this like other artist called T-A-Y-C comes in, wow, he's singing in French, guys. Honestly, amazing. So the French bit that comes into the song, incredible. Some amazing, amazing new artists on here. Um, also some well-known artists on here. So I will link it below if you were looking for a little bit of R&B inspiration. Um, and sorry, it's taken me so long. One last artist that I'm really into is called, she's called Akila. She is a Canadian artist and has this like really, really beautiful song called Bloom. Um, I've added, added that to the playlist as well. So let me know what your thoughts are. Other bits that I think are really, Good. So on one of my trips, I watched A Mother's Intuition with um, Jessica Chastain and Anne Hathaway. All I'm gonna say is the ending of that traumatized me. The ending of that absolutely traumatized me. I'm also watching, um, or I've also just finished watching um, Presumed Innocent on Apple TV, Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not a film buff, but I also am super, super into incredibly written, scripted, acted pieces of content. Jay Gyllenhaal Hall in Presumed Innocent is elite levels of acting. It is 
incredible writing. It's by the guy that wrote Ali McBeal. So is it David Kelly? David Kelly is like a renowned script writer and Presumed Innocent is one of the most incredible things that I've seen in a long, in a long while. Just in terms of the elite writing, the elite storytelling, elite, elite, elite performance by all of the actors. But Jake Gyllenhaal has gone into my elite level of acting. The ending of Presumed Innocent, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, the ending, <laughs> elite. So I now have to go because I've taken so much more of your time than I planned to. But thank you so much for catching up with me. This is a reset video, as I mentioned, more great content coming and I'll see you all in the next video.